Hey guys, welcome to It's Real Jordan Demi. We are here in person with not just one guest, but two guests, Caitlin Tarver, Olivia Olson. What's going on, guys? Hey. What's going on? Thank you for having us. And yeah. Demi, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty, like, satisfied with this matching outfit that we have going on today <laughs> with these two. I we know. Coordinated we did have a little pink and green going on. We, yeah. didn't even, we didn't even mean to do it, but look at us. It's meant to be and we on are, the wavelength. Uh, <laughs> we are in the heat of summer. We're in the, the height of summer right now. That's right. Now, I, I brought you guys together on the show. Uh, you... There goes the lights. You were just saying, should I take those down? The that answer was, is, that the was answer the dull. Yes. The answer is yes. We couldn't sure get the lights the turned on, and we should have just taken them down. Um, that was answered for us. <laughs> all right, all right. That, we're just leaving that in. That's that's part of the, that's yeah. part of the show. That's the magic of, of live TV. Um, of live, yeah, we're yeah, live. live. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Anyway, um, this is live. <laughs> yeah, is it? This is, Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is um, no, but for real. So I, I brought you guys on the show together because you have a few things in common. So you guys were on camera at a young age. Um, Olivia, you were, of course, on Love Actually, the famous scene, and Caitlin, you were on American Juniors, and then you... (laughs) Not as cool. Not as cool, (laughs) Um, but still, something worth talking about. It's true, I guess. It set the foundation. That's right, right? that's right. right. Um, And and right now, you guys are both sort of hybrid actor, music people, and you sort of, you're working on albums. I know, Caitlin, you've announced your album that's coming out. Um... Ish. 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 But it's not, always yeah. ish. It's, a, it's you, always you ish. You announced there's one coming out. But there not. is one coming out, yeah. But details are still, I guess, under wraps. Under wraps. So mysterious. <laughs> and Olivia, you're kind of in the same place. You, you're working on a new album, but... Yeah, ish. Ish. Okay. <laughs> and, and Demi, where are you at on your... We're working on a little EP. Yeah. Working on a little EP. So I am the only one who is not working on some kind of music project, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, so <laughs> Caitlin, we'll start with you. Oh, um, I love your, your latest music. Um, Thank you. it's kind of melancholy. You've been releasing a lot of sort of like, uh, little Elliot Smith vibes, a little less Ooh. depressing, but sort of in that sort of, uh, range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like it. And I Thank like you exploring, I love that you have, you kind of have a deeper voice. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like your singing voice is deeper than your talking voice. Okay. Yeah. And I love that. I um, so what, yeah. so you're, yeah, so you're ish working on this album. Yes. Um, what will it be like? Is there songs in the album that are a little more uplifting, a little more? Yeah. Positive? Yeah. There's, there's a mix on there. I mean, I, but I definitely think there's, um, a theme I'm, I'm sort of on, uh, with this new music and I kind of just leaned into it because I don't know. I, I, I like, it's hard for me not to go into an album and view it as kind of like one cohesive kind of statement um so that's kind of what i felt like with this one too and so you share the theme oh (laughs) well i mean it's like like he was sort of alluding to there's a lot of like um i don't know kind of like existential questions reevaluation what it matters to me who am i what am i after where am i going what do i care about am i special it's just like all these kind of like big life questions that we all think about the what if uh, yeah the what ifs and what's what is anything and i don't know i just kind of leaned into the questions and just asked a lot of them and they all kind of came out in the music and um i just decided not to uh i don't know take that away i just was like why don't i just keep leaning in and not be embarrassed about it <laughs> you know so yeah. uh there's that but there's there's some uplifting moments and i think it's um and there's just moments where there's more of like an acceptance of that. And I don't know. I, I'm excited about it. I think it's a, it's definitely is what it is. Like there's no shying away from that, but um, I'm excited for people to keep, keep hearing the stuff that hasn't come out yet. Yeah. I was actually talking to a, like an actor friend of mine who wants to start making music. And I thought this was really interesting because coming from acting, like it's, it's one way to emote, but like, when you're writing your own music, there's a lot of, like, vulnerability that, like, you can't say, like, someone else wrote this, you know, or, right. like, this is, you know, people are going to think it's or assume that it's your story. So, like, how yeah. does that feel coming from the acting world to be so vulnerable, you know, within your own music? 
Yeah, it's scary. I mean, it is, it, but it always will be. And, and and I think there's also, there is an element of that to acting too, even though it's not your own words. It's like your giving of yourself and the performance. And you got to bring your experience yeah, to that. Yeah, totally. So it's all vulnerable. I think making art in general is like, you just kind of sign up for that. And so the sooner you can just kind of get used to the discomfort of it, the better off you'll be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Olivia's like doing our job over here. She's like, sorry, <laughs> I, I asked so many questions. I'm a Gemini, so I'm uh, like, oh. hey, wait, what is everyone's signs here? Gemini, Scorpio. Oh my god. <laughs> Victoria's I love that reaction yeah. every time. Oh, and yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Leo, and and, and I'm ha I'm fine with that. I, okay. Everyone said it's like you're a leader, you're strong, yes. you're uh, stubborn. I guess is a is a, a thing. Okay, great. I don't know. I'm a Cancer. Oh wow. Oh man. Okay. I'm a talker, and I'm I'm very curious. I love so it. Like, I love it. I love. I'll yeah. interview you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Olivia, we'll, we'll turn to you. What um. What is your album going to sound like? Because it's been a minute since you came out with new music. Yes. Um, I've kind of been trying to figure out what the new sound was. I think, you know, the Adventure Time fan base that I've sort of had over the years, they're very used to hearing me sing as Marceline. Yeah. And, um, you know, even though her story and her style is very much like a part of me, I think my regular music I was making didn't necessarily parallel that in a great way. Um, and so I've sort of found more of like a middle ground now of, you know, she's always had these kind of like melancholy lullaby type sounds. So I'm going a little more like lo-fi, um, mashup. Lean, lean into that study beat sound. Love it. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm really excited about it. It's very like fever dreamy and kind of takes you away to a different place in, in an adventure time sense where cool. it's a trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's one thing that, um, that a lot of most people don't have to deal with as singers is having to match their music persona and sort of have it correspond with their their uh, cartoon voice persona. It's a very, I gotta give the people specific, what they want. Specific, yeah, yeah, yeah. For anyone who like wants to get into like voiceovers, or just someone who's so curious, because I've I've actually never like met someone who does voiceovers. How, like, did you get into that? Like, how? <laughs> what is that? All of my voice actor friends have very different stories of how they got into it. Um, I think mostly just by being in the industry and other avenues, but um. My start, I guess, was, you know, I did the child star thing when I was uh, 10 and I kind of quit. It was very hard to sort of place me. People didn't know what I was. I'm very tall and like I was like very curvy 12 year old. Like I looked way <laughs> older than all of the the little boy actors I was playing against. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, so I just like was fed up with auditioning and like knowing that like that just wasn't happening for me um so I took a break and my dad is a writer in animation and comedy and he started writing on um Disney's Phineas and Ferb which um and they wrote a ton of songs for that show and so anytime they needed a demo done he'd be like hey Liv can you demo this for me real quick and I'd be like okay <laughs> Um, rolling my eyes, okay, dad. Um, and, you know, just having the people at Disney then hear my voice through that, they're like, wait a second, you should be on the show. You, you got something. So uh, Dan and Swampy, if you're watching this, hey, um, thank you for <laughs> writing me into the show. Um, but then, yeah, from there, um, you know, the creator of Adventure Time heard me um, on Phineas and then, the rest was kind of history. I just got really lucky to be on two like hit cartoon shows. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now, Caitlin, you had a, you had an interesting path because you did music without acting for a while after American Juniors, right? Yes. So, yes. so what kind of pushed you into acting? Uh, you know, it's it's um. It's hard as a kid to have a lane in the yeah, music you industry. Just, honestly, like I don't know, like you probably felt like this too, maybe like you just sort of find yourself in situations when you're like young and you're like trying to get into this industry. You kind of are like, I don't know what to do. Like, I mean, I was from Georgia. I didn't have any sort of ties to anyone here. And you're just kind of like, I just want to be a singer. I like acting. I'll do it all. Like you just kind of get so excited on the thought of, 
being a part of this industry in general. And so you gotta take the opportunities when they land. Yeah. And so when when I did some, you know, doing something like American Juniors, you sort of get access to, you know, you're on TV, so people are like, Well, do you wanna act? And you're just kinda like, sure, you know, like yeah. And so I started getting, you know, the random audition here and there. And yeah, I was also pursuing music and like had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't writing songs at the time. I just was like, I want to sing. And so I would do like, my dad would like call middle schools in like my area and be like, hey, hey, y'all, my, my daughter was just on that uh, American Junior show. And uh, can she come sing at your school? Like literally. Oh and God. they'd be like, oh, so uh, we like guess. Yeah, oh, my dad like, was like full father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, you know, he was like, that's so sweet. He was going to take me to the top, you know? Like, And so <laughs> I sang at all this random shit. Like, I just was kind of, like, trying to make my way, like, as best as I could while still being in Georgia and um, just kind of, like, n- having not a lot of connections. And so... Yeah, and this, was just, the, and this was the era before they were filming a lot of stuff in the Atlanta area. Yeah, so yeah, there wasn't that. much yeah. going on in Georgia yeah. at the time, but... Um, you know, I did enough things and I eventually moved out here and just happened to audition for Big Time Rush and um, that sort of gave me my, like, entry into acting, you know, because it was, like, a real role on something and um, it was crazy. I mean, it was just, like you said, it's it's hard not to feel just like you got super lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't you know. never know when you book something if it's going to tank and get canceled and the pilot will never be seen or well, if it's going to be a massive thing like big time y- yeah you have no idea and and I don't know if you feel like this maybe not but as I've gotten older and sort of like looked back on things you're like I don't know like how, <laughs> I don't know how I got that like I I'm so much more connected now to like the craft of it and and what I want to do and in wanting to excel and like but at the time you're a kid you're just like or at least for me, I was like, uh, I don't know how I got this part, which is like a strange thing to say, but it's just kind of like a weird thing to look back on and be like, it wow, is. I'm super lucky. Because I and think like, you, just, you're a little bit removed when you're in the thick of it, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. it's just like audition after audition and this and that and that, and then you book something and then you're working. Yeah. And then it's like when you're older, you kind of look back and reflect. You're like, oh, I was a part of that. Right. That's you're like, how did I even end up odd. there? It's a strange thing, but I don't know. It's... it's um. It was exciting, obviously. Very yeah. fun. <laughs> Hardest part about being in the industry so young, like what kind of moments do you remember from your childhood that you were like, whoa, that was tough on the mental and the spirit? Or was it all just kind of like, okay? Was it all good? It's definitely a battle. I mean, um, on one end, at least for me, like you're ch- you're chasing your dreams. You're, you're really passionate about this thing, but it's a lot of rejection over and over and over again, which is kind of hard on a little kid's psyche. And, um, you know, for me, it was just like, no one could place me in a bubble. It was like, okay, well, you look Hispanic, so can you speak Spanish? I'm like, no, I'm half black. Okay, well, you don't look black, so you can't play that. And Mm. it's like, it was very weird sort of typecasting that you'd fall into. Um, And not even your own Mm. ethnicity. (laughs) Right, (laughs) exactly. And so... um, just a lot of, you know, questioning, well, who am I, you know, and, and what roles can I play? And, yeah. um, you yeah, know, what, what, what was your, what was your plan? What, after, um, Love Actually blew up and you were like the girl pop from Love stardom. Actually. Of course. Pop stardom. But, what but, else? But, but, but what did you want to do after that happened? What did you want to do? Pop, pop stardom. That's the, <laughs> so, so after that happened, you were like, I want to be a singer. Yeah, like, that was I mean, I, I've <laughs> been writing songs and singing like ever since I was a little, little, little kid. And I think the, like, I really wasn't even an actor when I got the part. Um, and, you know, I had to take a lot of acting classes for that because I, I still, like, look back and I laugh. I'm like, Sam? <laughs> like, the, it was so bad. The acting Aww. side was so bad. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, there's not a whole lot of, like, lanes for a 12-year-old to be a pop star. It's like, right. what do you sing about? Your crush on 
like yeah. <laughs> right in sixth grade like uh and I wanted to be a serious musician of course. of course of course um so acting was definitely like the avenue to to do that to be the you know Disney Lane yeah kid star kind of thing mm-hmm. but I'm so glad that didn't yeah, work out totally. for me. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would have been much harder to yeah. like try and cope with to get like that famous at that young of an age. Yeah. That would have been tough, even though you know we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of those moments where you're like, get what you, want. you get older and you reflect and you're like, like oh, oh, thank God. God. <laughs> it's hard enough. And uh, Caitlin, you, you've done this simultaneous acting and singing thing. Has have you ever had moments, have you always wanted to do both simultaneously? Or were you like, if I become a pop star, that's fine. Or if I become an award-winning actress that everyone knows is in all these movies, that's fine too. Or I were mean, you always like, both I do sound be. fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, 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 have, have they kind of like moved in front of each other over the years? Yeah, they've, they've like, um, I, I, I had like a stint for a few years where I kind of took a, like more official break from acting and like wasn't auditioning. It was just kind of focusing on music and was like, all right, I'm just going to do that because there were some things that happened that like it was becoming too much to try and balance both. But I don't know, after a few years, I kind of went back to it and then just had this thought of like, why would I limit myself to one or the other? Like, it's just... People, I, it feels like there's pressure to do that. Like, well, which one do you like more? And it's just kind of like, <laughs> I don't know. Pick Why do one. I have Pick to choose? Yeah. Like, I like to do both. Why? I think it's I really funny. Both? I feel like um, people love to put people in boxes. Yeah. And say like, oh, you should just pick one thing. Or you, there's like, it's better to pick one thing than do the next. But the reality is like, if Elon Musk can run five to six businesses at one time, like how come I can't pursue totally. a few well, things at like, once? Totally. like someone like um, Donald Glover, like Childish Gambino, like yeah. he, no one's ever like, well, which one do you like more? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, maybe they are, but it's like, he's like, I don't care. I'm going to write a show. I'm going to star in a show. I'm going to yeah. do music. I'm going to be, and I'm going to excel yeah. at all of it. Like, he's definitely one of my like, you know, people that I totally want to emulate that yeah. career. Yeah. He plays the male version of Marceline um, in the in the Fiona and Cake uh, series. That's See? Now. You're on your way. Yeah. 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 He's already my male counterpart. Yeah, so exactly. I'm putting that out right. after battle. I like yeah. how everyone gives... Donald Glover as an example, like it's easy. Like, yeah, just oh yeah, gosh, just what Donald Glover does. yeah, of course. It's so, there's 24 I mean, hours in a day, yeah, there's 24 hours exactly. in a single day, but it does kind of make you see, like, um, it, it's all it almost is a lot mental of like the the limitations you put on yourself. And if you don't do that, what all is possible, you know, yeah. probably a lot more than you think. So, where so what do you guys do? I mean, because you've kind of had a little bit of a gap between acting projects. Yes. Um, what, where, where do you guys stand on like your projects now that you can actually talk about? Things well, we're all up. on strike, we're so. Strike. Let's talk about the so, strike really quick. We're on strike. I was texting with Olivia last night, yeah. and she was like, what should I prep? And I was, I almost said, we're going to keep it light and not, yeah. and not reference the strike, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard not to. We have not like to. some SAG members here on the show. That it's yeah. Like, it's interesting. The animation side of things, are it's not on strike, though. Right. So. That's true. I know that Beavis and Butthead is in production right now, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I heard, yeah. Anyway. Is that, that's still on? They 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 got a Paramount Plus uh, reboot. Every, it's, everything's getting rebooted. That's yeah. right. I mean, I love it. Both yeah, my shows got rebooted. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Dre, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on board. Did you, were you at Comic Con this weekend? I was not. No, I'm I'm in the middle of moving. I like, oh, I'm right. up to that's here right. and stuff. And yeah. <laughs> that's the worst. Yeah, Olivia well, and I are now neighbors. Neighbors. Yeah. Hey, yeah. how fun. <laughs> Yeah. Jealous. <laughs> so what is actually going on? For people that don't know, like, what's the writer's strike? <laughs> what's, oh, yeah, what's gosh. going on? Oh, gosh. Maybe not go through all what the details, yeah. but kind of give us, you know, like, oh. uh, what, how, what's, what's going on right now with you guys? How do you guys feel about it? Like, Well, it's a necessary evil um, to, you know, it's just been going on for too long, though. Like, yeah. I feel like now it's getting kind of scary territory because people have been out of work for so long right. that it's going to really, really start affecting their lives bad. But, um, you know, just pay to be 
up with inflation and getting the right residuals and making sure AI doesn't take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thing where, the lot. thing if you're a, a background actor and extra, you can get your body scanned That's for wild. a one-time fee. Right. It's freaking crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, that's like Black Mirror. Like, we are in the future. Like, you're wondering when the future was coming? It's now. <laughs> it's right here. The future is now. Yeah, somebody, like, tagged me in an AI. They, like, took my voice and had... Marceline doing covers of this song no and I'm just like I mean, it was cool to listen to but it <laughs> freaked me out because yeah. yeah. there's really no regulations over you know yeah. if if you know we they already could go and take a sound bite from a previous episode and just put it in and like right. what's stopping the companies from just and it's crazy how mashing good, that up and it's doing it's crazy that. how good like the cheap quick like app versions of of like you know, deep fake videos are. This yeah. isn't like people with multi-million Skills. dollar like editing bays. These mm-hmm. are people on their phones and like their laptops doing this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I mean, I, yeah, I think it's I think it's good. I think it's great that it's happening, but it it's hard to just kind of be like, oh gosh, everything's kind of on pause. But so, yeah. so with some, it's affecting other all the other people within the industry as well, and so. the and the and the mm-hmm. businesses around the studios. Mm-hmm. Where uh, without giving away the full address of our location, we're close to the studios, <laughs> and um, the greater Los Angeles, the greater area. Los Angeles area, <laughs> and um, and there's all sorts of restaurants and and you know. Uh, Rental rental houses yeah. and, and and prop houses and all sorts of stuff, um, especially like kind of like there's every, all there's all these you know bars and restaurants are kind of like go to hangout spots. So that's the downside of it for sure yeah. is that it's affecting Los Angeles as a whole, right. um, not just you know the actors and the writers because yeah. it's you know we want to we want to stick it to the man but not at the expense yeah. of everybody else. And there's some of us that simply just have too much time on their hands right now um, <laughs> without naming any names. Yeah. Um, so speaking of, let's make it a little bit lighter. Yes. Now, um, what have you guys been watching? Now, Olivia, do you actually watch animated shows? I do. I, I do from time to time. I'm not like a huge, as of late, TV person. Like I feel like I was just so like in my binge mode during the pandemic and stuff, and now that I am working at a computer all the time like the last thing I want to do once I like turn off for the day is like stare at a screen again yeah <laughs> so mm, I haven't fair. really been watching too too much I've been I've been writing a lot of music yeah. honestly that's cool yeah um what have I been watching uh, I mean I just remember what I watched last night I've been watching the new season of Righteous Gemstones oh nice. so yeah I uh I was watching uh, the other two. We'll get into that a sec. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That. <laughs> and that. And that. I've been so, watching Is It Cake while I've been p- packing for my That's moves. nice. Okay. Have you seen that show? I, I've watched Is It Cake <laughs> videos on, on Instagram, but I haven't watched that show. I don't even know show. what that is. Oh, my God. It's on Netflix. You have to watch it. It's <laughs> like the most bizarre, weird show that you have to guess, Is It Cake? Wow. <laughs> There's a show for everything yeah. these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be like a TV or it could be like a shoe and then you don't know until you cut it. If oh, it's cake or not. wow. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Is this cake? <laughs> well, I guess we don't know. <laughs> but but Kate, Kate, the next time. I want to add, you, you come, you have a, you talked about your, your parents really not being showbiz pizza people. <laughs> oh, that's just showbiz pizza. Showbiz people. Showbiz pizza. <laughs> <laughs> your, your parents uh, weren't showbiz people, but right. yet you have a, uh, your brother Drew is also in the business and actor who is one of the, the leads on the other two. Yes. HBO, yeah, yeah, and you had, yeah, and you had a song on there, um, yeah. And so, first of all, I I love the show, and this this season, I I wanted to like talk to you about it, but it's not your show, so I'm like, I'm not going to go in depth. About, like, <laughs> I'm happy to talk about it. But I do like um, the one thing I'll say about this season is that it's more surreal. Mm-hmm. It's more there's more like fantasy sequences and yeah. what I would call um, <laughs> magical realism, where mm. like magical stuff happens, but everyone just kind of accepts that it's right. part of the universe. Right. Right. Um. And you had a song, your own song, yeah. um, on the, the season finale, yeah. right? Yeah. So was this a thing that was set up way ahead of time? Or was no. it like, I have this song, it could be used for this? Tell me how your song ended up on your brother's show. 
Well, it was um, honestly all props to my brother because... A bribe? Yeah. I, I was <laughs> like, if you don't put my song in your show, mm. um, I don't know what I would have on him, but I'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah. um, you got some embarrassing photos Yeah, somewhere. I'm sure I could find yeah. something, but yeah. I don't know. He's on that show. He's already been humiliated yeah, enough there, every episode. There, there, if, if, yeah, there, there's one particular scene this, this season... Oh, there's so many. ...that, that is yeah. quite revealing. No, but yeah. I... I I mean, it's I'm obviously biased, but I'm a huge fan of the show and think it's so good. And so, yeah, Drew was like, oh, you know, he knew I was working on new music and he always likes to hear stuff. And he was like, I'll have to send it to the writers and see if if one of the songs makes sense to be used in an episode or something. But so I didn't really have much expectation because it's just like you never know with that kind of stuff. And but I was like, oh, that'd be amazing. And then it just worked out that one of the songs really um, lined up with like the theme of the episode and really the, th- the theme and of the, the finale season. too. Though, and the finale, awesome. it was like really special because I don't know on on so many levels. Obviously, like for it to be on my brother's show, like and it actually ended up being the series finale, which I don't know if you knew that, but. That's it. Way to ruin my day. Sorry. I, I, I know. So because we only we only get three seasons now. Three seasons and get the it. hell out. Yeah, that's exactly. How you do TV now. So it was even crazier because it was like, wow, this is like the final episode ever. And it was like a very uh, I don't know, like meaningful moment for my brother's character. And like then it's like me and my brother get to experience this thing. And it just was like so yeah. great. Yeah, sweet. we were like really um emotional about it. It was really sweet. For like our whole family, we're like, oh my god. <laughs> um, so yeah, but it was it was um it was him. He sent the music over, and it just happened to work out. So it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Demi, you should, you should, Demi is not a huge TV watcher, uh-huh. but uh, I, I recommend. It, honestly, that show is a little too close to home for me. This well, season is a little. That's too, what I mean. It yeah, was like really funny yeah. because I. A I'm lot like of I've been to these parties. Up. I go to it's these parties. It's about the industry. Okay. It's about just how crazy it all is. And honestly, it was funny because. I, as I was watching this season, you know, so much of the new music I have coming out is kind of circling around similar things. Yeah, like as you far had as multiple songs like, that could have been used. Totally, the, which was <laughs> very like coincidental. Yeah, it was you like, should have forced that down. You should have drew. There's got to be seven songs. Well, throughout the yeah, series. yeah. I was just like, honestly, take your pick. Like oh, they wow. all kind of fit well, yeah. because yeah, Drew's yeah. character is. You know, basically getting obsessed with fame, obsessed with success, like willing to go to mm-hmm. any length. And like, obviously right. it's absurd. There's so many absurd moments, but it's yeah. kind of hitting on that real thing that you can encounter when you're in this industry where you just kind of get lost in the pursuit of things. And you're like, I have to prove to who knows, like people back home, yourself, <laughs> your family, your friends that like, I'm going to be successful. And you just kind of lose yourself a little bit. And I would experienced that to some degree of just kind of like, that's where all this new music is coming from for me, of just being like, I've been in this industry since I was a kid. I've like done so many different things. I'm like still like climbing the ladder. Like, I'm just like, what is success? What is, what am I doing this for? Like, I know it's kind of deep, but it's just like, it was really funny to see the parallels between kind of like, what had been going on in my head and then like what I saw depicted on screen like through my brother's character. I was kind of like, oh God, like this is kind of tough to watch, but obviously really a funny like spin on it too. And it just made Satire, it. Satire. Yeah, this yeah. reminds me, okay, so I'm reading this book called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Oh yeah. Hugo? Have you guys heard about that book? I've heard about it, but I haven't read it. It's yet. such a good book. Yeah. But yesterday I was reading and she talks about how just like she's basically an actress um comes from like you know humble beginnings goes to hollywood and becomes very successful and has seven husbands shout out <laughs> shout out um but make sure the mic's up, <laughs> mic's up. But, yeah. <laughs> but basically she talks about in My terms voiceover. of success <laughs> like it's never ever going to be enough like one award two awards right 2 million dollars $10 million, you'll always just want more. Right. And I feel like there's kind of just like what it means to be, because there's no book on how to do this, just like how it's, it's to be a doctor. Chase. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah, so, yeah. How much did you guys care about fame when you were like teenagers? Well, we both wanted pop stardom, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think a childlike view on what that means is very different than, you know, how I see it now. Now I'm like, mm-hmm. thank God I'm not fake. I got recognized at the grocery store the other day and I was like, 
it's weird. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like this one bit. So you, kind of, you enjoy being known as an adult more for your voiceover work and being kind of not yeah, because it's kind of like it's just like a little nod. It's like if you know, you know, and <laughs> yeah, I feel like real fans. Cause yeah. real, at yeah. this point, fans who know you are know you from like conventions and yeah. appearances on stuff like and that. And if you're going to something like that, you mentally prepare. But like, I can't imagine how it is for you know superstars that they can't even leave their house. Yeah, right. It sounded fun when I was ten. In the other right, cases. sure. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a fabulous life. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Caitlin, did you? I mean, like, what? Because you were a little bit old. You were like late teens. You were. Do you actually uh -huh. graduate regular high school? I did graduate regular high school. I did. I sure did. And me too. Hey, Good job for being yeah. kind of normal. Yeah, yeah regular <laughs> high school. Everyone went. I went to Either. public <laughs> high school. <laughs> yeah, and look where I am. Look look where good I as good as now. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it was nice to be able to do that. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I didn't go to college, which was weirder and weird enough now to look back on. But yeah, I'm glad I finished high school. That I guess. Experience. <laughs> yeah. At, at any point, have you guys been like really into acting? Like, um, in uh, in the other two, there's a character that's like method to the point where he's always in character. <laughs> oh God. Um, which is a really funny bit, hilarious bit. Yeah. But um, how much did you guys get into whole like the craft of acting? Not, not so much. <laughs> no, I mean, I, none of the things that I've been in were super serious. Like, I feel like the best actors like right. are known to like play themselves, right? Yeah, that's what you say about Jennifer Aniston. Is that would you say that? Would you like? Take I mean, I think it's no? it's being able to bring yourself to to the character yeah. and just like be natural and like believable with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I think about that a lot because I'm like. Oh, should I've gotten more training? And maybe I still will. Yeah. I mean, it's always kind of like evolving. I'm kind of like interested I've, in I've been it more in class now before, than but. I than I was. Yeah. when I was in the thick of it. Exactly. Yeah, when you're a kid, you're like, I don't know. And then yeah. I, I I was in class for a bit, and it was it was cool to kind of like study it a little bit more and like try and uh, work that muscle, I guess. Yeah, it, it's yeah. fun. I did uh, acting, and I was a high school theater kid, and I did forensics, competitive speech, and stuff. Oh. And I kind of stopped when I was in college, and now I do this kind of thing. But I like sometimes I have moments where I like, man, I could really like. I want to. I wonder if I could like act this point because <laughs> I haven't tried since I was seventeen or something. You know? Right? Yeah. I guess it's like shooting a basketball or something. Yeah, it's, you it's might always, need to get back on the court. It's always there. <laughs> it's always there. It's always there. <laughs> What's like a fun little acting tip that both of you guys can give? Um, Right now, like just off the top of your head, if you had to say just one. Well, for voice acting, uh, Tom Kenny, who I worked with for many years. His, legend. He's a legend. legend. I mean, the number one thing that he told me when I was very young getting into it was like, he's like, just be a freak and go for it and don't care about looking like embarrassing. You can always dial it back, but yeah. like you really just, just put it on and just do the weird thing because nine times out of 10, the weird thing is the great thing. Um, the safe thing is going to get you uh, not noticed. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. I feel like, yeah, it's kind of like trust your instincts, mm -hmm. like just go for it and do what you think is funny or dramatic or emotional or whatever. I think it can be easy to, to like, yeah, try and not do you, put your do, guard up and get do you, embarrassed. Do you like when, an, when a director gives you a lot of room or do you like more specific direction? I love direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it makes me feel safer. Like you but, know what you should do. <laughs> yeah, but I think that like mirrors life too. It's like, yeah. can someone tell me what to do? What's the <laughs> right choice? Um, I don't know. But I think that's like a good, a good director probably has like a good balance where they like give you the freedom to, to make choices and try stuff, but also can come in with a couple of thoughts of their own too. It's yeah, always nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, we got to wrap it up. But gotta thank you so much <laughs> for coming by and joining us on a in-person, on-camera so episode exciting. of It's Real Jordan Demi. Huge. Um, go, Groundbreaking stuff. Groundbreaking. We'll put your socials underneath your, your, your yeah, right there. <laughs> right here. Right there. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, uh, I'll remind everyone again to go stream Demi's new song, Boys Like You, and check out oh, yeah. all our past Good. episodes on popdust.com as well as the latest music and pop culture news. We'll see you later.